Hey there, and welcome back to our Harkla YouTube channel. We're so happy to have you here today. I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica, and we're the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkla. And today we're gonna talk all about motor overflow. <laughs> so motor overflow or overflow associated movements, this is something that we talk a lot about in different videos. So we thought it would be helpful to have one video that explains it, what it is, why you need to know about it, and the fact that it's not always just like a funny thing that people do. There's more to it. So motor overflow is actually a developmental progression that all children go through and it typically disappears in adolescence. Mm -hmm. Now, some examples of like what you might see that our motor that we would consider like overflow are like cutting with scissors and the child's tongue or mouth is following the same sequence of their hands. If a child is drawing or writing, they are sticking their tongue out or they're moving their, their tongue in their mouth. Um, one activity that we do is like um, in-hand manipulation skills with boating balls and you have to rotate the balls around and a common one that we'll see is the other hand will be mimicking that. Same with like crumpling paper with one hand. Crumple, crumple, crumple and that other hand is like mimicking what mm -hmm. it's doing. Yeah, so essentially anytime you're doing a motor action, motor movement and you see overflow movements or those same movements or similar movements in another part of the body. So Rachel's descriptions of like overflow in the mouth or in the other hand, those are the ones we typically see when we're working in an OT clinic and we're working with kids with sensory challenges or retain primitive reflexes. We'll see a lot of those overflow movements because something's going on in their brain and body that's not allowing their body to disassociate those movements. Yeah, another common one we'll see is when we ask a child to do a duck walk or a pigeon walk and their feet are pointed out and they, we ask them to keep their hands at their side. And as they're walking with their feet pointed out, their upper body is, is mimicking their lower body and it's like either moving out or if they're pigeon walking and their toes are pointing towards each other, their arms are also like externally rotating and, and mimicking that. So we can see that with those retained primitive reflexes, that, that challenge with disassociating the upper and lower body, the left and the right, like with the cutting and with the drawing, um, and then the mouth from the hands, which again is, you know, we see it commonly with those retained primitive reflexes as well. So the ideology or like the reason why a child has prolonged motor overflow, it's not always cut and dry. We don't always know what causes it, but you know, as occupational therapy assistants, our goal is to always find that underlying why and do we need to work with this child on it? Or do we need to remediate this or is it just, you know, it's not impacting their function. So it'll probably, improve with time and with, with practice. Cause oftentimes we see this with those novel or those new motor actions that are difficult and the child's still learning. Now motor overflow is actually something we will see in infants. As the infant's brain is developing and they're learning how to move and control their body, we will see that motor overflow and it's normal, it's common. We actually want to see that motor overflow as the infant, the toddler is learning all of these new skills, even into like early elementary age, we are still gonna see some of this motor overflow as the child is learning new skills, especially like cutting, writing, those types of novel tasks that require a lot of new work and focus and attention, we'll see that motor overflow. But by around 11 years old, as the brain has started to get more into that mature development, we wanna see that motor overflow go away, disappear. We don't wanna see it overtaking all of our activities. Now, it is also interesting that the research shows motor overflow can reappear after a traumatic event or in the elderly population because it's almost, it's similar to our primitive reflexes where it's almost like a protective response, but also just the fact that, you know, motor overflow occurs because the brain and the body aren't connecting 
hundred percent. There's not that full connection and dissociation throughout the brain and the body. So if you have a young child and you're seeing the motor overflow, we don't want you to be concerned. If you have an older child and you're seeing that motor overflow, that's kind of where we want to take the next step and say, why is this happening? Let's look at those underlying causes like Rachel mentioned and keep watching this video because we're going to give you some ideas. Yeah, the goal is just to be aware of this. You know, I have a three-year-old and he, anytime he like moves his arms or like does funny things with his arms, his tongue is like, like, <laughs> and it's like out and like, like a llama's tongue, like just, it's, it's there. And I just have to laugh. I'm like, oh, well, now there's some overflow, but you know, yeah. you're three, you're going to figure it out. Cutting, it's like, you know, it's just, it's, it's super fascinating. I'm going to just wipe all the saliva off. So what do you do if your child is having motor overflow during their daily activities and tasks that they're doing? First, if your child is younger, you know, under 10 years old, no need to really be concerned unless you're seeing other signs of other challenges elsewhere. Just know that it's important to keep doing those activities like cutting, riding, the gross motor activities, and maybe just cue your child, hey, you know, when you're cutting, chew some gum, and that can help dissociate the um, mouth from the hands while they're, they're cutting. And then as you're practicing these activities more, and as the child masters those skills, ideally that motor overflow will disappear. If your child has a neurological condition or anything that is causing these, you know, overflow challenges to linger and to you know, for you to notice them longer than, you know, over the age of 10. Like Jessica mentioned, you want to make sure that you're continually practicing these skills. You want to make sure that you are providing, if safe, things like chewing gum or proprioceptive strategies or using video feedback if you're doing like the duck walk or the pigeon walk and, and showing it to them and seeing if they can identify, oh yeah, you asked me to put my hands down and my hands are, you know, up like a like, tur like turkey arms, you know, or chicken leg, chicken wings, chicken wings, yeah. So you can have them identify what they're noticing, you can talk about it, and then you continue to practice those activities. Another thing you can do is incorporate more crossing midline activities. So we have this invisible midline down the center of our body that differentiates our left side from our right side. And anytime we can cross midline with our arms, our legs, our eyes, we're activating both sides of the brain and we're getting those neurons firing to both sides of the brain. And this can really help to improve that motor overflow and master these different skills. Now we have a full YouTube video on different crossing midline activities. So we'll link that in the description. You can go watch that video next to get some ideas of what to do with your child. Another thing to be aware of is primitive reflexes. So you wanna make sure that we have all of our infant primitive reflexes integrated, things like the Babkin response, things like the polymer grasp, and you know, we talk more about those. We'll link videos below in the description for you to check out if you are interested in learning more about primitive reflexes, testing them, integrating them. We have everything you need to know about primitive reflexes, but that's a big one when it comes to those overflow movements as well. Another one is to do those duck and pigeon walks that Rachel has already mentioned. So the duck walk is the one where you walk with your feet out and the pigeon walk is one where you walk with your toes pointed in. And so you can put a piece of tape, like painter's tape on the floor for maybe like 10 feet and practice doing that duck and pigeon walk. And if you are seeing those movements, those overflow movements in the hands and the mouth, you can have your child keep their hands on their hips you can have them hold on to something in front of them and that just helps teach the brain and the body to dissociate the arms from the legs and then one last activity we love is you know more in hand manipulation activities we talked about crumpling paper with one hand we talked about the chinese boating balls that you rotate around each other um, and just working on those in-hand manipulation skills, picking up objects and squirreling them in your hands, and we call it de-squirreling, taking them out one at a, one at a time. Um, so a lot of those fine motor in-hand manipulation, object manipulation activities are really beneficial. Motor overflow, overflow associated movements, however you wanna call it, these are important to be aware of. We're not trying to freak you out if you're noticing these things, let's just be aware of you know, try incorporating some of these activities and see what happens. 
And if you are really concerned about your child's ability to get through their day, their sensory processing abilities, make sure you talk to your pediatrician to get an OT evaluation. We really recommend in-person occupational therapy services. It's the best way to go. Plus, we like the saying to you know rule it out. So if you're questioning, if you're concerned, we wanna just go get that evaluation just to see. Yep. If you haven't already subscribed to our podcast, we do have a very helpful podcast. We do talk about overflow in uh, one of the episodes we'll link in the description. It's All Things Sensory by Harklets on all of the major podcast platforms. Definitely recommend checking that out as well. And if you found this video helpful, make sure you click the like button, leave us a comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss a new video. If you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out, but we will plan on seeing you next Tuesday. I don't know where you left off, what we were talking about. I left off on this. Yeah, I know. I don't want to look at you any too. That's weird. <laughs>